Hello, this is Bruce with Webicator. In this video, I'm going to show you a solution posted on the website Learning SharePoint that describes how to provision a SQL Server virtual machine for a SharePoint 2016 install in Azure. Learning SharePoint agreed to let us create this video showing the solution, which is available as an article at the URL shown here. The article that I'm using is part of a three-part series of articles. I'm going to be using the middle article which means that the first article describes how to provision a virtual machine and a domain controller. I've already done that part. I'm going to be setting up the SQL Server. So to get started with this, I've logged into my Azure account and I'm ready to provision a new virtual machine which will host my SQL installation. Now my interface is slightly different than what is shown on the website and the directions on the website. Uh, this is a newer interface that Microsoft recently rolled out, but the steps are pretty much the same. Um, again, it's just a little bit newer interface that I'm using than what was used with the article. So to get started, I want to create a new virtual machine. So I've got a little navigation tree along the left-hand side. I'll click virtual machines, which is one of my choices. And then from the panel that opens up to display my current virtual machines, uh, the machine that's that's in there right now, that's the domain controller that was one of the required steps that I've already provisioned. So I'm going to be adding a new server with that domain controller and then joining it to the domain that uh, was defined by that domain controller. So I'm going to click the add button that's at the top kind of toolbar. And I need to find my virtual machine. Microsoft provides, along with a bunch of third parties, a whole bunch of kind of predefined uh, virtual machine images that you can start with. So I'm going to look for one with SQL Server. And this comes up with a list. I'm going to go with one that's right there at the top of the list. It's listed as uh, recommended by Microsoft. This is running SQL 2014, or it's going to be running SQL 2014 with Service Pack 1 um, Enterprise on a server 2012 with R2. So I'll go ahead and click the Create in this panel that's opened up to the right. This also has a description of my virtual machine. This opens up another panel where I can provide some information for my virtual machine, the first being the actual name of the virtual machine. So I'll call this SQL Server 2014, and I'll put a VM at the end of it. Create a user account for the virtual machine. I'll use my account name. Give it a password and then select a resource group. So the resource group I've already got defined. Uh, it's the same resource group that my domain controller is a part of. This one that's at the bottom of my list, this SHP 2016 Net RG, is the one that I'm going to pick. Click OK. And then it comes up with some sizing options. If I scroll down a little bit, we can see some of the prices that. Uh, these virtual machines would run me on a per month basis. And these are the recommended virtual machines. Now, if I were setting up a production server, I might go with one of these recommended settings. But since I'm only going to be using it for testing and personal use, these are really much bigger than what I need. And I don't really want to pay that higher monthly cost. So if I click the View All link, this will open up and show a bunch more options. And I think I'll go with the one there, the D1 standard. That looks uh, pretty reasonable price-wise. So I'll select that one. And this one comes in and shows me some additional information. It's already picked up on my virtual network, which is perfect. Uh, that way it'll be able to see the domain controller. And then ultimately I'll be able to join it to the domain. If I needed to, I could make some adjustments here, but everything looks pretty good. So I'll just click OK with those options. Note that this interface also allows me to supply some configuration settings for the SQL services that will be running on it. Uh, again, I'm going to leave everything at their default settings and go ahead and click OK for that panel. Then I get a summary that describes everything that my virtual machine will be at least initially configured with. Again, everything looks good to me, so I'll click OK to start the provisioning process. And I can see a little panel in that upper right where it started. It'll take a little while for it to get completely provisioned, uh, which I'll go ahead and pause the video at this point, and then I'll come back once it's provisioned and go into 
the further configuration and joining the machine uh, to the domain that I've created. The SQL Server virtual machine has completed provisioning. It took about 30 minutes, but now it's ready for me to continue with the configuration of it. So now what I'm going to do is click the virtual machine's uh, navigation link there along the left side. And I can see that my virtual machine, my new virtual machine, the SQL Server is currently listed, is running. So if I select it by clicking it, this will open up and show me some information, uh, some monitoring statistics from it. And most importantly for what I want to do, I have a connect button that I can click up here on the toolbar. This uh, tries to download a remote desktop file, which I just click the open button for it. Once I've entered the credentials of the account that I created when I provisioned the virtual machine, then I get to the desktop using this remote desktop connection. And now I can uh, join this machine to the domain that I created on my virtual network. So here on the server manager dashboard, I'll click the local servers along the left-hand side of my navigation panel. This opens up and shows me some additional information uh, about my virtual machine and I'll use that work group link, click the work group link, and this offers a dialog box where I can change, and in this case, I want to change to join uh, the domain I created. So I'll go ahead and click the change button. The server name I want to leave the same, I don't want to change that, but I want to choose uh, the domain and the radio button. And the name of the domain that I created for my virtual network prior to this video demonstration, I called it Contoso. Dot msft click OK enter the credentials that I created in that domain and then I get the welcome to domain message which means I'm good to go I was able to talk to my domain controller on my virtual network now that the SQL server is part of the domain that's on my virtual network I'm ready to proceed to the next step, which would be to install a SharePoint server uh, running the 2016 version. And you can read more about that at the Learning SharePoint site in the third article that's part of this series. Well, thanks again to Learning SharePoint for the inspiration for this video. You can find more articles about SharePoint at the URL shown here. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it.